welcome to God's church. We're glad you're here. I know I am. Very much so. Very much so. Beautiful weather out there. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful day. We'd like to have to call the worship now. Have you not known our God is the everlasting God, creator of the ends of the earth, and those who wait for God will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Have you not heard? God does not faint or grow weary. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powers. We come to hear, we come to know. Thanks be to God. And now I'm opening him. Great is thy faithfulness. There is no point. Friends, 
to sing is sure and worthy of full acceptance that our Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to rescue sinners like you and me. We give thanks and praise to God that in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. scriptures for this morning from the Old and New Testaments. From the Old Testament, we'll be hearing from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. And from the New Testament, we'll be reading Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 39, continuing the story in Mark's gospel. Let us now listen for God's word to us. First from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on him. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak, because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come here. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the children today, I have uh, I have something here that maybe you all know what it is. Anybody who doesn't know what this is? Can't see it? It's thin like that. It's a phone! Alright, good. Yeah, it's a mobile phone. It's a mobile phone. But my phone has a problem. I'm trying to turn it on. 
and nothing's happening. Why do you think that might be? Does anybody know what that, why that might be? Battery might be dead. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to charge it last night. And so if I didn't charge it, it's not going to work very well. Well, we learned something important from the scripture today from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, about Jesus' life. Jesus was a busy guy, what we were reading about in the scripture today. He was asked to heal Simon Peter's mother-in-law. And after he healed her, then suddenly people started to come from everywhere, from all over the town, trying to get healing. Some people were sick with diseases. Some people had spiritual sicknesses. And Jesus was taking care of all of them until late in the night. Right? And the next morning, I think Jesus' battery was a little bit dead. Right? Because what he did was, he went off to a place all by himself, and he prayed. He wanted to spend time with God. And while he was spending time with God, just like this phone, if you plug it in, he got recharged spiritually. And he was ready for the next step in his ministry. And I think it's the same thing for us, too. We get busy with so many things in our lives. And sometimes our batteries get run down. Maybe we have to study too much for a test or... People are nagging at us too much for some reason. Maybe brothers or sisters are fighting with us. Or we get in some argument with our parents. And our batteries kind of run down. And we need a chance to recharge. We need to go to God and bring all of our problems and all of our situations before God. And get a recharge in our spirit. So I hope you can all do that. When your battery starts to run down, you can go to God and get a recharge. Gracious God, we thank you for recharging us when our batteries are running low. Help us to be a light for you in this world. Give us new energy and new strength. Bless each one of us and our families today and every day. this week.
That's good. He says enough. Well, sometimes it's important to know the why of things, isn't it? If any of you have ever had a small child in your house, you know about that question, why, right? Clean your room, why? Take out the trash, why? Right? Um, so many why questions. It's important to know why sometimes. When you're young, you want to know the answer to these why questions. When I graduated from high school, I wanted to take a break from studying. I was done with studying. I was free, right? So I didn't want to study anymore for a while. My dad had a different opinion. He thought I needed to go to some place called college. And so I asked him, why should I? And he thought about that for a minute. He said, well, if you don't want to go to college, you need to look for a job. Well, that sounded like a good idea to me. So I started to apply for jobs in the area. But strangely, I couldn't find many opportunities that didn't require a college degree, right? Um, so it was kind of hard to find any. But finally, through a friend of mine, I got a position as a construction assistant, helping out with some construction projects. And this was in July, in Florida, right, doing construction. So I worked for two weeks in the hot sun, pouring cement and roofing a porch at someone's house. And let me tell you, after two weeks of construction work in July, I suddenly knew why I had to go to college. It was all very clear to me. Nobody needed to explain to me anymore. I knew why I needed to go. Well, in Mark's Gospel, as we continue in chapter 1, we come to a story in which the why of things takes center stage. This is still the same day that Jesus had healed a man with an evil spirit in the synagogue at Capernaum. And now in the same town, on the same day, he goes with Simon Peter to his house. And there he finds Peter's mother-in-law sick in bed with a fever probably close to death. And yet Jesus merely reaches out, pulls her up by the hand, and raises her up, and she's well again. Well, word quickly gets around that Jesus can heal people. They've seen what he did with the demon in the synagogue. They've seen what he did with Peter's mother-in-law. And that evening, people start to crowd all around Peter's house pleading for healing from their illnesses and sicknesses and problems. And Jesus heals them and cures them. It seems like Jesus is about to set up a medical practice or, or a, a faith healer shop at Peter's house, right there in Capernaum. And in the morning, the next morning, the crowds are back. But Peter looks around, and he can't find Jesus. He and the other disciples start to search frantically everywhere they can think of. And they discover that Jesus is outside of town, praying. Well, the disciples obviously didn't understand why Jesus had left the house, why he felt it necessary to leave, because they asked him, where have you been? Come on, everyone is looking for you. But Jesus shocks them with his reply. Let us go on to the neighboring towns that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is why I have come. Well, the why questions in this text abound. Why did Jesus leave the house early in the morning? Why didn't he heal all the people who were waiting for his miraculous touch? Why did he leave town? The scripture invites us to ask why, to try to get to the bottom of what Jesus is up to. So let's do that and see what we can find out. Now I'm going to take a guess here, and I'm going to say that Jesus himself needed to know the why of his ministry. Jesus was God, but he was also human. And as a human being, he didn't know everything all the time. 
And just like us, he sometimes got overwhelmed by the circumstances that he found himself in. I mean, just imagine the scene that evening at Peter's house. Everyone in the whole town gathered around the door, all of them expecting Jesus' healing touch in their lives. This experience of suddenly meeting the desperate needs of others must have been both exciting and exhausting. I can remember ministry trips to villages in Egypt where I was so amazed that so many people wanted to meet me as the guest preacher from America. But uh, it got exhausting sometimes. I mean, there's only so many hands you can shake and so many greetings you can say, and there's only so many houses you can eat in before your stomach explodes, right? It's not always easy serving others. And Jesus must have been asking himself, is this his purpose? Should he just open a shop here in Capernaum? Jesus himself needed to know why he was in ministry, why he was preaching, why he was healing. To know the why of his ministry, Jesus had to spend time in prayer with God the Father. Right in the middle of the busiest time of his earthly ministry, right there at the beginning, Jesus got up and left. And he went off to a deserted place to pray. He needed to find the answer to the why question. And he got his answer. We know this because he told Peter, let's go to the other towns to proclaim the message there too, for that is why Maybe we need the same thing in our own lives. Maybe we need to turn to God in prayer to answer the whys of our own lives in the same way. Consider the words of this poem by an unknown author about going to God in prayer even in the busy seasons of life. I got up early one morning and rushed right into the day. I had so much to accomplish that I didn't take time to pray. Problems just tumbled about me and heavier came each task. Why doesn't God help me, I wonder? He said, you didn't ask. I tried to come into God's presence. I used all my keys in the lock. And God gently and lovingly chided, why, child? We did not. I wanted to see joy and beauty, but the daily toiled on, gray and bleak. I wondered why God didn't show me, but he answered, you didn't see it. I woke up early this morning and paused before entering the day. I had so much to accomplish that I had to take time to pray. Prayers can help us with the whys of our own mind, not just the big questions, but those little day-to-day whys as well. When Jesus knew why he had come, he could know what he needed to do. Jesus was ready to make wise decisions because he knew the whys of his ministry. He wasn't seduced by a fame that suddenly came to him out of nowhere. He doesn't seem to have been tempted to set up shop there in Capernaum. It seems he knew why he had been sent and what he had been sent to do. Knowing the whys of our lives can free us to do truly amazing things. It's Black History Month this month, and as I was preparing this message, I was reminded of the great works of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., a man who truly knew why he had been chosen to lead a movement to change the lives of black people and to change our nation. His I Have a Dream speech has become the most famous speech in American history. 
but I recently learned something that surprised me about that speech. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had written the speech the day before with the help of some advisors. But in the original version of the speech, the dream was not part of it. It was more of a political speech and an organizational speech trying to prepare people for the next steps in the plans that they wanted to carry out. But when the time came and he was up on the podium, as Dr. King was in the middle of his speech, it said that a singer, Mahalia Jackson, kept on saying, tell him about the dream, Martin, tell him about the dream. And so Martin Luther King was inspired to share his dream with the crowd right then and there for the first time. He knew why he was there that day. Dr. King was a man of prayer. He called prayer his secret weapon because in prayer with God, he found the courage to face the most frightening and challenging moments in his life. Do you know the why of your own life? Do you know why God has put you on this earth? Have you discovered that yet? Do you have answers to the whys of your life from day to day? Maybe we can't know the answer to every why of life, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't ask. It doesn't mean we shouldn't turn to God with our list of questions just like a child would turn to a parent. But if your prayers are like mine, I suspect you don't ask the why questions nearly often enough. My prayers are more often the I need variety. <laughs> I need your presence. I need strength. I need wisdom. All that may be true. But how do we really know what we need until we answer the why questions? God, why did you wake me up this morning? Why did you put this person in my life? Why did you give me this job? Why did you put me in this place at this time? We need to ask those why questions. We might be really surprised by some of the answers that we get. Ask God why. Don't be afraid. Because the answers will prepare us for what God has in store for us in the future. Knowing why led Jesus to this place to prepare this table for us where he offered himself for us in love his body broken for us his blood shed for us why would God do such a thing for you and me let us pray as we prepare our hearts and our minds for communion. Gracious God, we are amazed by your Son, Jesus Christ, and how in talking with you, he knew why he had come. Reveal to us, we pray, the whys of our own lives why we have to pass through what we have to pass through. Why you put us here. As we come to your table, help us to know why you have given yourself for us in the form of your only Son, our Savior, and our Lord. Pray these things in his name. Amen.
Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and highest joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Holy Lord, everlasting God. You created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. You made us in your own image, and in countless ways you show us your mercy. Therefore, with the angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name, praising you forevermore. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory and blessing are yours, O holy God, for in your great mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ. He took our human nature and suffered death on the cross for our redemption. There he made a perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We praise you, most holy God, for sending your only Son to live among us, sharing our joy and sorrow. He told your story, healed the sick, and was a friend of sinners. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. We praise you that he overcame death and is risen to rule the world. He is still the friend of sinners. We trust him to overcome every power that can hurt or divide us, and believe that when he comes in glory, we will celebrate victory with him. We give you thanks that our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he died, took bread, lifted it up, and broke it in the presence of his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, lifted it up and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Wherever you drink it, do this in remembrance. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break one bread and share one cup, giving thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ. As you raise our Lord from death and call us with him from death to life, we give ourselves to you to prepare to live for him in joy and grateful praise. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let us take it in here. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we might go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name 
of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we continue in an attitude of prayer, this is an opportunity for us to bring our prayer concerns and thanksgiving before the Lord. Some of us may have prayer concerns about certain teams we want to win a game today. It is okay to pray for that, but please keep it to yourself. Are there other prayers we'd like to lift up for the community? I'll pray for Jeannie. Like tomorrow, she will just we'll pray for our friend Jeannie who has surgery tomorrow. Pastor Bryson. Yeah, I just want to let you know, my boss's wife, Clara, she's out of the hospital, really? off oxygen. It was touchy for a couple of days, but she's doing better and better every day. Wonderful. So it's, yeah, it's a blessing. It's amazing. Wonderful. Thank you all for your prayer. Give thanks to God for answering prayers. Come. Robin, prayers for Robin. Well, we've been, we were praying for Mark last week, and he's here, so give thanks to God for that. Need us to pray for his friend Sandra okay. and Kathleen and Barry. The three people Sandra, Sandra Kathleen, Catherine, uh -huh, and Barry. And Barry? Uh -huh. okay. Sandra, Catherine, and Barry. Okay. Let us come before God in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the freedom, for the blessing and the opportunity to come before you in prayer, to bring our concerns, our thanksgivings, our joys, our worries before you. Lord, we ask that you would hear the prayers that we have lifted up in your presence, the people that we have mentioned. We're thankful for prayers answered. We're thankful for people who are coming out of the hospital after long illnesses. We thank you for people who are joining us once again who were not able to in the past. We ask your continued presence with each of the people we've mentioned in their lives. Lord, we ask you to provide for their physical needs and their spiritual needs, their emotional needs, whatever needs they may have, <clears throat> that you would provide for them. We lift up this community, Lord. We put every person and every family in your hands. Be with us, be with our family members, our children, our grandchildren. Lord, be a blessing in our lives that we might be a blessing to others. We put this community in your hands. We ask that you would guide and lead and strengthen us as we face the many challenges of this world. Give us wisdom, give us insight in the path that you would have us walk. Show us how we can better serve those in need around us, those you have put in our lives, whether they be here in this neighborhood, around the church, or near our homes, near our places of work, or, or the places where we shop. Guide us and show us why you have put us in those places. For we ask your blessing to be upon this nation, that you would bless the leaders, give wisdom and insight. Let them govern with humility, the people that you have put under their care. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. And we pray also in the words that our Lord and Savior taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Welcome again, everybody. Uh, there we go. Welcome again, everybody. And yeah, uh, visitors out there today, if there are, we have some cards in the back you can fill out. And we'd love to see you back here next week and every week, for that matter. And a few announcements. By the way, I think it's, I think you're right, Pastor Ben. We should not, you know, bring up our football picks today, even though it's a super Tampa Bay. <coughs> sorry. Back down the way. That one slipped away. Okay, please remember to social distance as we leave. We'll have blessings out there for you, bread, and all kinds of goodies, and you know, take one, but just make sure you're six feet apart. We really appreciate that. Ministry to Children with Special Needs, which was yesterday, and it was very good. I heard it was very, very good. It went well with more attendees, and that's really cool. So the next one will be March 6th at 1 p.m. on Saturday. It's on a Saturday. We have a new website. Sunsetpc.churchspring.org. Bible study Tuesday in English at 3 p.m., Thursday Spanish at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Children's Sunday School classes are at 10 10 a.m., and Spanish Adult Sunday School at 10 a.m. Updated church directories are available in the office church for pickup. So you can go to the church office for pickup, one per family, please. Our weekly food pantry is available to all those in need every Saturday at 8 a.m. And as always, if you can go to bags, and you can bring in to help us out. Joel's doing a great job with that. Thank you, Joel. And everybody else who volunteers, all you guys coming in on Saturday mornings. Very, very cool. Thank you. Anyone need your food or clothes, please speak with Pastor Bryce. And don't forget that Pastor Bryce is offering church membership classes. For those who are thinking of joining or want to know more about being a member of Sunset, contact the church office for more information, please. The Shower and Love Ministry is present at Sunset every Tuesday and Friday from 8 a.m. to noon, offering showers and hygiene supplies to those in need. If we need to contact you, please fill out a contact card with your name, address, phone, and email. They're in the back. We can get right back there for you. And our next session meeting will be February 15th at 7 p.m., via Zoom. And also very important, pray for our church and our community. Take a few minutes out every day and just, you know, either thank God or, or you know, ask Him what we need to do. And uh, just please take some time to pray for our church. We love so much. Now y'all want to turn around and say howdy to everybody. Everybody just stay little just if you want to say hello. Boy howdy. Very good. boxes in the back when you leave, but then you go with all the cards and everything else right there.
Gracious God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us in our lives. The ways that you have poured out your spirit in abundance upon each one of us. We thank you for the material gifts that you have given each one of us. We bring these tithes and these offerings before you as a sign of our commitment to you and to your mission in this place. We ask that you would receive and set apart those gifts to be a blessing through your community as we seek to serve those in need around us. Bless each and every person, those who are able to give. Bless even those who are not able to give. Bless each one of us in a greater and greater abundance that we might be a more abundant blessing to others. We pray all these things in the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn today will be Sweet Swing Low, Sweet Chariot.